how do I add headers and paragraph text and good stuff like that to an HTML page? Because presumably we want actual text on our page, right? Well, now's a good time to actually have a look at the page that we're going to be building, okay? Um, so here's a coming soon page, um, and it's got, it's just a coming soon page. It's at my, my uh, sandbox website right now, and we've got a bunch of text on here. Well, let's not worry about the images right now. We'll deal with that later, but we've got a bunch of text. We've got this title here that says coming soon, this like header up, up here, and then we've got a bunch of, this is called lorem ipsum. This is just dummy text. doesn't mean anything. It's not real Latin. It's just supposed to sort of look like that. Um, it's just a, a tool that we that designers will often use to fill up text to see what bunch of words are going to look like. Um, there's an email kind of button link here and then there's some more things down here and then there's a little credit thing down here. So how do we add this text to the website? Let's start doing this. Let's go back to our text wrangler and um, and here's a good opportunity actually I'm going to mention something here. I'm on a small laptop computer um, and, and so this is why I'm just flipping back and forth between these. Um, but if you happen to have a bigger screen, do you know what I recommend you do? I actually recommend that you, you it's a really good idea to just resize these in a way so that you can see them side by side. That, that's going to be really awesome because then you can just make changes here, save them, and then reload them here and see what they look like. On my screen, it's not really going to work that well because it's so small. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip back and forth between them. I, I hope that's okay. Um, but hey, a good opportunity for you to get used to your own computer, and it doesn't really matter. Okay, so... Um, how do I add headers and paragraph text? Um, well, here's a couple. It's by using tags. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this stuff right here. And let me introduce you to a couple tags. Probably the most basic tag there is is called just the P tag. P stands for paragraph. And I'm going to do, um, this is a really good habit to get into, I'm going to actually, whenever I type tags, always type tags in pairs. Why? Well, because it's really easy to forget a closing tag. And then it's going to mess up your code, and you don't want that. So whenever you are typing out any tag, type the beginning, and the, like the starting tag, and the ending tag, the, the opening tag, and the closing tag, and then type your stuff inside here. OK? Um, so let's have a look at, uh, so that's that's paragraph text. What kind of paragraph text do you want? This is good for paragraphs, OK? And here's one paragraph right here. I'm just going to copy this text. And I'm going to go ahead, and I've positioned my cursor in here, and I'm going to paste it right in there. Oh my gosh, what happened? All right, here's something I want to tell you about Text Wrangler. This is unique to Text Wrangler. Um, by default, when you start Text Wrangler, the default is just to show everything so that everything's on one line. Um, you can actually change that, and that's this little box right here that says T. You can click on that and you can select soft wrap text and see what it does there. It actually wraps the text around so you can read the whole thing. Um, the computer still considers all of this to be on the same line, namely line 11. So that's why you see dot 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 down there. Um, but just it makes it a lot easier for us humans to actually look at the text that way. You can toggle this on and off. OK, I like to see it with the soft wrap text on um, these numbers. If you're not seeing these numbers on the sign side, you can just click show line numbers and that toggles them on and off. And um, the reason that there are line numbers doesn't make that much of a difference to us. Um, but when you're validating your code, when you're checking your code for errors, there are tools that can look at your code and then they will spit out at you. Hey, you've got an error on line you know, 15, and that's just going to save you a ton of time, and that's great. So there we go. So we've we've added a paragraph. Let's actually go ahead and save that, and let's load this file in here. Um, and again, to do that, I'm just going to take this file, this index file that I've been editing. I'm going to drag it, and I'm going to drag it onto Google Chrome. There's a couple different ways of doing that, but that's just an easy way to do it. Um, and there it is, okay? Uh, it's kind of boring looking. It doesn't look at all like that yet, but don't worry, we're going to get there, okay? Um, next thing is, uh, let's talk about uh, the, the header, that, that header text up there. We want coming soon, so I'm just going to go back to my text wrangler, and I'm going to position up here, I'm going to write my coming soon. I'm going to actually, actually, I'm not going to do that. What am I going to do? I'm going to write the header, the header tag first, and the header tag is just this. It's just H1 like that. Um, and here's the thing, you can actually have multiple headers. You can, you should really only have one header on, on every page. And that makes sense, right? Because a page can really only have one main 
main header. Um, everything below that would be considered subheaders, and that's what you can use like H2 for. Whoops, oh my goodness, I made a mistake. See, uh, accuracy counts, folks. There we go. H2 would be a subheader to that. And I'm sure you're familiar, and you can use as many you know, subheaders as you want. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with that. Think of like your resume. Your resume would be like your name is the header, and then education and, and, and and experience and references and volunteer all that stuff would be your subheaders okay this page is super simple we don't need any subheaders or anything like that and by the way you can go down to six levels you can have h1 h2 h3 h4 h h5 and h6 all these like real you know you can incremental uh, subheadings and subheadings of subheadings and subheadings of subheadings it's pretty crazy eh um we're going to keep things simple we're just going to use one main header and our header is just going to be coming soon that's it okay um let's have a look at what this looks like i'm going to hit save and let's just now here's the thing see what i did i just came here this i made that change i saved it why is it not showing up here because i actually have to hit reload so no matter what browser you're looking at get used to where that reload button is or the refresh or whatever because you need to reload it and there it is and um and web browsers have some default ways of displaying things. So by default, it's going to show headers as large and bold, and it's going to add extra space between the header and the paragraph text. And by the way, that space has nothing to do with this space. I could do that, and it doesn't make it a darn difference right here. Um, but uh, but yeah, so, so there's our coming soon header. What other text do we need? Um, oh, we've got an email thing here. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that in right now. I'm going to say PTX. I'm going to open that, and I'm going to close that. And here's what I'm going to do. I actually have a couple things I need to do. I'm going to make a couple. I'm going to do that right there. Just copied and pasted that. And what do I have to say here? Here we go. Email info at robobunnyattack.com for more info. Info. There we go. And then finally down here, what do we have here? Web page design copyright. Web page design copyright oh we haven't we don't know how to do that copyright symbol yet um, but we'll learn how so for now I'm just going to write out the word copyright 2012 by Kathleen Farley and then I got at Harris Institute which is the school where I teach at and I'm going to say Toronto Ontario Canada don't worry about the the case for this we got some cool tools that can help us change the case, the letters from uppercase to lowercase and all that stuff. For now, just write it normally, okay? Um, get rid of that. Um, if it's more comfortable, you can do that. That's that's perfectly fine. It's not going to make a difference. That just makes it easy for us to read, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's see. Let's see what we have here. I've saved that. Let's go back. I've got this, this open right here. I'm going to hit reload. There we go. We've got our coming soon. We've got that information, a little bit of dummy text. We've got an email thing here. Obviously, none of these links are working yet. Doesn't matter. We're going to deal with that later. Um, looking good so far, right? Yeah. Um, one other tag I want to tell you about. It's a special tag. Um, and this is a tag that lets you be kind of sneaky. This is a tag that lets you put text inside your, your, your web page that nobody's going to be able to see. At least it's not going to sh display in the web browser. And you might be thinking, why might you? Why would you want to do that? Well, it's a good idea to comment. It's called commenting, and it's just little comments that you can write to yourself um, to remind you of certain things, or maybe to give instruction to somebody else who's going to be editing your code at a later point in time. Um, and so this is what it looks like. And this is an example of one of those where there's no opening and closing. OK, and I'll show you what it looks like. It's a special tag. Um, and I'm going to put, let's say I just wanted to, um, I wanted to make a note down here about uh, we need to figure out how to do, here we go. We need to figure out how to do a copyright symbol. OK, um, if I just go ahead and save that, it's going to show up in my web browser. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do open bracket and then I'm going to do exclamation mark. See, it's kind of one of these special, you know, codes Then I'm going to go dash dash or minus minus and see how everything's grayed out after this. This is like the web browser is like not going to pay attention to that. And to close it, I'm going to go dash dash and then close. See what happened there? 
So here's a little code to myself, a little note to myself that says we need to figure out how to do a copyright symbol. I'm going to say for the text below. Okay. Um, and then that's, and I can put that anywhere. I can save that. And that is not going to show up in my web browser. It's just a little code for myself. So if you see these little, this code that starts with the um, bracket exclamation mark dash dash, that's just special comments, okay? So I'm going to be using this once in a while um, to just insert information. It's going to be useful for you. So let's go back here. Let's just prove it, reload it. See, there, it, it's not showing up in here. Now, it's actually still on your web page. Uh, you just can't see it. It's not displaying it. So don't be putting, like, passwords or anything like that in there. Um, that's a bad idea because here's how you can view it. You can go to View. You can have a look at the source code. I'm under View, Developer Source Code. And see, this is here. It still shows up here. It's just it doesn't show up in the web browser. That's all. So don't put anything in here that you need to keep really private. Um, but hey, this is looking familiar, isn't it? See this? Looks awfully similar to this. Well, it's the same darn thing. It's just that, you know, Chrome happens to use a different color coding system, but that's pretty much it. Okay, um, that's all I got for you right now. I hope that you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.